What's going on everyone? Scott here. Welcome back to the channel. So Michigan State gets a win against Northern Michigan in the first exhibition game of the 2024-2025 season. 70-53 to in Tom Izzo's homecoming up in Marquette, Michigan at the Superior Dome. And it was a great weekend overall seeing everything. All the Tom Izzo love from his alma mater there retiring his jersey. Getting to have him speak at a banquet on Saturday night as well. Everything they did for him during the broadcast on Sunday as well was amazing to see. Um, and then this was the first time seeing this uh, new 2024-2025 squad, some new pieces, a lot of new pieces and a lot of new places. Obviously, Michigan State uh, replacing a lot of its production from the last couple years. Uh, new guys, new spots, as we've talked about, you know, at length during the summer and this lead up to this game and this upcoming season. But, you know, we're going to talk about this game a little bit. Some it, it, At the end of the day, it's an exhibition. You know, you can't take a whole lot from it, but we can take a few things, a few things that we were looking for coming into the game. So we're going to just talk about that briefly as we have about a two week or so hiatus then from basketball before we get to the next exhibition game against Ferris State before we move into the regular season. But first, before we talk about this game, if you could just hit that like and subscribe button down there for more MSU content on the channel. So let's just uh, jump right in. 70 to 53, uh, 31 points in the first half, 39 in the second half. Only allowed 19 in the first half, 34 in the second half, though. That's how you come up with that final 70 to 53. Now, this was a pretty evenly distributed minutes game from Michigan State, as we expected. Everyone played between about 15, 20, 21 minutes in there, and the, the starters was actually kind of the thing that, one of the first things that we were looking for coming into this game. We, we talked about how in MSU Madness, they went with uh, Jeremy Fears, uh, Jaden Akins, Frankie Fiddler, Xavier Booker, and Jackson Kohler. And that's the lineup that I've been asking for since last year. That's the lineup we had been asking for since the end of last year, should I say. Uh, went a little different. When Tom Izzo said during the summer that, uh, or a couple times during the summer and early this fall, that... It's a possibility that Simone Zapala, a transfer big man, could start. Um, I don't think anyone actually took him seriously. At least I didn't. That's no shade on Simon Zapala. It's just, you know, two experienced guys in Carson Cooper and Jackson Kohler already on the roster have already played that position. And especially after the Spain trip as well, when Jackson Kohler was head and shoulders the best big of the three. Um, and then you roll out the lineup, and it's the four that we mentioned, one through four, but then Simon Zapala is the starting five. Um, not saying this is going to be the starting lineup here in a couple weeks when we kick off the season, but that was kind of a surprise. And I will say why we were on, why we were on the Simon Zapala subject. I thought, again, an exhibition, so take everything that we're going to say this whole video with a grain of salt, but... I thought he looked pretty good, you know, six points, nine rebounds, and he also had a nice rebound in traffic, power dribble in traffic, and put back slam. Uh, that's something that, you know, we have seen only a few times over the last couple years, so that was uh, good to see. As far as the other bigs, while we're talking about the bigs, I thought Jackson Kohler played pretty okay. I mean, in the first half, he did kind of get doubled on one or two uh, post-ups, get the ball stolen, uh, not make a good play there, but um, I thought we saw some progress from him, not looking like he did uh, during the summer in Spain. But again, it, it's the second week, whatever, of October, first exhibition game, you know, way earlier than any exhibition game is usually played. But I thought he still had a solid outing for Michigan State. Nine points, eight rebounds. Made a three as well, one for two from the three, four for four from the free throw line. Uh, Carson Cooper did what I, I think Carson Cooper will be asked to do. He's not going to be the center that is going to be expected to go out there and put up eight to 14 points. No, he went out there. He had Four rebounds, uh, one for two from the free throw line, and then he had three blocks. Of those three blocks, I think the nicest one was one that he had uh, kind of in transition, nice uh, two-hand block on the backboard, get it out, then you got a fast break going the other way. I believe that was the sequence that also led to a, one of Kurtang's two threes as well. Uh, we'll get more to Kurtang here in a minute. But overall, from the center position, uh, not much has changed, if not maybe like a slight little percentage like up in terms of positivity going into this season. It, but overall, it's my expectations are pretty much where they were at coming into this game. But I thought we saw some nice things, like I said, uh, some power stuff from Simone 
Zapala are uh, the nine rebounds as well. Next up, I'm gonna I'm just gonna get the the not even I don't, I'm not even calling it bad. Uh, just like kind of like ra slightly raise an eyebrow to to keep an eye on as we move into the second exhibition game and as we move into the first couple games in the season as we ramp up for the Champions Classic against Kansas. Uh, Jaden Akins um, struggled a little bit, which we saw this summer in Spain as well. 2 for 12 from the field, 0 for 4 from 3. No rebounds either, only 1 assist, 4 points. Um, that cannot happen. At all. And, you know, other guys were able to step up. And I think, I think, you know, besides it being, besides the opponent, I think this is going to kind of be how MSU is going to attack this year. Like, yes, I think, I'm not worried about Jaden. I think it'll take time for him to, you know, kind of grow into that number one option. You know, we might not see that until late December into Big Ten play in January. But I, I'm not worried about him. I think he'll eventually find his role in that. But I think this is going to be a more balanced attack than we've seen in years past. Over the past couple of years, it's been Tyson Walker or Malik Hall, go get a bucket, or at times AJ Hogarth, just get down, just get downhill and get to the basket, make something happen. And then even going back a couple of years to Joey Hauser, pick and pops, and that was a more fluid offense as well. And I think I think that that especially at the end of the year, that offense was doing some more stuff. I think this is going this offense. This year is going to have a lot more contributors. You know, one night it could be Jaden Akins going for 22. Another night it could be Xavier Booker going 18 for 18 or 22. And, you know, another night could be Frankie Fiddler. And then another night it could be a handful of guys going for, you know, could have like, you know, five to seven guys getting in double figures. You know, I think that's just going to be the offense this year. I think as of right now, especially, I think the defense is further along than the offense, which is okay. I would much rather have the defense further along than the offense. And coming into this year, I think that's something that Michigan State is going to have to hang their hat on until guys like Jeremy Fears, as we move into more of the positive. I thought he, I thought he looked good, but as he's getting comfortable being that number one point guard, lead guard of this team, of this program, obviously having his season unfortunately cut short last year, you know, as he gets into his first couple games fully starting, getting into the role of things, I think it could take a while for this offense, you know, to start clicking and finding its rhythm, but I believe it eventually will. But Jeremy Fears, nine points, uh, two assists, plus three for four from the free throw line, two for two from three, which was huge and if he can hit those consistently if he can give you a one to three three pointers a game that's a huge plus for this offense did have four turnovers though leading the team 14 turnovers overall not a, horrible for your first exhibition after only having a handful of practices an exhibition about two weeks before you normally have an exhibition game so 14 turnovers i don't think is as bad i Obviously, you want that number 10 or under, ideally, but for a starting point, not horrible. Um, and then, I, I guess I did lie. One last kind of, not as I said, not even negative, but frankly, Fiddler only got 13 minutes. He had four fouls, and they were all in the first half. He didn't start the second half. I don't think he got in until under, the under four timeout in the second half, and you know, five points, two turnovers as well. Um, wasn't a good good start, three for five from the free throw line, so missing two free throws. Um, not Again, not concerning as well. Obviously, those fouls got him out of rhythm as well, but not concerned going forward. But then as we move in to kind of close this out, um, some really big positives for me, uh, Jace Richardson and Kurt Tang. I mean, the two freshmen, Jace Richardson, I said in the preview for this game how excited I was to see Jace Richardson this year. Jace Richardson, 11 points, one steal, uh, four assists, and two for two from three, four for four from the field overall. He had that nice in transition, saving the ball from going out of bounds to shovel it to Xavier Booker for the breakaway dunk. I mean, that, and then you slide over to Kurt Tang, six points, three rebounds, two assists. I mean, he was coming in from the wing. You know Tom Izzo loves that and is going to love that in the film room. Coming in from the three-point line, jumping into the paint to grab rebounds, kick it back out to reset that offense. Saw him do that. And then uh, two for four from the field, two for three from the three-point line for Kurt Tang. I think, as I said, I think both of these guys are going to have a pretty big impact off the bench this year for this team. Then just of note, too, I know this is kind of way all over the place, but uh, Cohen Carr, um, we said coming into the year, um, please 
only played Cohen Carr at the four. Um, and I don't think we saw Cohen Carr at the four for a minute in this game. Um, had, you know, two points, four, four fouls, foul trouble as well. Um, three rebounds. Uh, I don't understand. I know it, it seems like that's the direction Izzo is going to go. Uh, I, we, we seen him make it work at times during the Spain trip a little bit playing the three. I just think he's just such a better positionally fit at the four position and what he can do. I think it opens up so much for the offense as we talked about. If, you know, you can have Booker at the five or if Booker's not out there, if you can have Jax at the five, because then you, you really got, then you can have Jeremy Fears and Cohen Carr both going downhill. Then you can have shooters around the perimeter. But it seems pretty evident that Coach wants to roll with him at the three. But um, obviously, this is still an exhibition, trying out different lineups and whatnot. So hopefully during the season, we will see more of Carr at the four, Book at the five. But really, overall, again, it's an exhibition. Not a whole lot you can take for this. Um, uh, I guess it, it, it was just good to see basketball and see what this team kind of looks like. Maybe, you know, what they're uh, going to try to work to get to this year. I think we'll get a lot more answers in a couple weeks uh, when we see the Ferris State exhibition uh, coming up here at the end of the month. But uh, this is a good starting point. We saw some good stuff. We saw some stuff like, okay, uh, we need to see this start to change over the first couple weeks of the season. Uh, so a good starting point to put a pin in that. And um, so I, I'm, I'm still, I'm excited for this team. And I think I'm excited because I don't like, I don't really think there's a lot of expectations, you know, coming into this year. You know, I think uh, currently, I think they're like anywhere from like fourth through seventh, you know, favorites in the league. And, you know, I really think there's a lot of variance in that. I could see this team possibly being a top, you know, three or four team in this league. But then if, things go bad and, you know, some players don't develop or take steps, then I could also see this team, you know, falling to towards what we've seen a couple times in, you know, the last handful of years going from like a, a 7 to 10 seed in this conference. So, I mean, I, I think that's what excites me the most is, you know, there's a lot of potential on this roster and I'm excited to see some different guys, you know, get a chance to step up. And I did, I did have in my notes here too, I wanted to say about Xavier Booker, um, 10 points, uh, three blocks, two rebounds, obviously need to rebound the ball better, get some more rebounds. But I mean, uh, Zapala, Kohler and, and Cooper, you know, they were really cleaning up the glass well. So a book, I do want to say his one, uh, I liked a lot of the stuff we saw. We saw him hit the, hit the three, the one three he took, and, you know, a couple of the nice, you know, fadeaways by the basket, too. But uh, one funny moment was him taking the elbow fadeaway <laughs> jumper and missing it by about two feet. And what I loved was, okay, that maybe wasn't the highest percentage shot, but guess what? The next time down, he gets the ball at the three-point line, dribble drive to the basket for the nice finish. I mean... That's that's what you like to see. That's the second year jump that you're hoping he makes, that you hope Con Carr makes. And I mean, I know this is kind of a pseudo year one for Jeremy Fears, but that's the stuff you hope to see from him as well. Uh, with the four turn, uh, Jeremy Fears with the four turnovers too. If he can bounce back from say a bad turnover, come back. And I know Izzo uh, mentioned him being one of his best defenders this year. Him uh, thinking that he's going to be one of his best defenders coming into this year. Turnover, get a stop at the other end, a push, get an open shot for the team, get a bucket for the team. I mean, I think that's going to be the resilience we want to see from this group going forward as we move throughout the season. But overall, I think it was a great weekend for Michigan State. As I mentioned at the top, see Izzo get his you know jersey retired, get to see him do all the stuff for him during the game, coming back home to Northern Michigan. So that was really cool to see, and I know it was a memory maker. For Izzo and for all the guys in well, Northern Michigan as well, um, it, it was great. It was great all around, I think, weekend uh, for Michigan State. So that'll do it for this one. And as I said, we've got about a two-week break before the next exhibition game for Michigan State basketball. But we do, for football, we do have homecoming this week. We do have Iowa coming to town for another night game in Spartan Stadium. So can't wait for that one. We'll be back end of this week for a preview for that game. And we'll be back with more stuff on the channel coming up. So thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.